so I wasn't even sure I really wanted to post a video like this because honestly, who cares? But I know that I love house tours, specifically historic house tours, so I figured, you know, why not? Um, but I do have to admit that the title is slightly clickbait. Um, this isn't actually a historic home, but it is a historical replica of the George Wythe House, which is one of my absolute favorite buildings in Colonial Williamsburg. I even posted a photo of the George Wythe House on my Instagram about a year ago. So when I saw this house pop up on Zillow, I just felt like it was just totally meant to be. So a little backstory, definitely feel free to skip ahead if you don't care. My husband and I moved from New Jersey to Virginia. We had been looking on Zillow for, a, well, I'd been looking on Zillow for years, like living vicariously through all the beautiful homes that I saw and saved, but um, it had become possible for us to move at this point. I was finally done with school, so I'd been looking on Zillow for a few months, but not too seriously because we still had so many renovations that we had to do in our New Jersey home. Since the market was just going apeshit, we had decided that we would put our house on the market in like late August, um, just given the number of renovations that we had to do. There was literally like wall-to-wall -wall 70 shag carpeting. <laughs> there was um, so much wallpaper. Oh my God, do not underestimate the staying power of wallpaper glue. That shit is literally the devil's work. Anyway, so I was scrolling on Zillow in about like late April and our dream home parameters were that it was a historic home, that it was on at least three acres because I really would love to create a little homestead one day and grow the majority of our own food. I just like, I absolutely love gardening. And number three is that it was in a relatively rural area. My husband and I come from a small town, maybe about 10 miles from New York City, two by two miles, and it inhabits about 35,000 people. So no matter where you live, even if you live in the nicest area, you will see your neighbor. There's absolutely no privacy. And it was just something that we definitely wanted a change from. We know that our parameters were definitely very specific. Usually historic homes were built in population areas. Um, but thankfully, since we both work from home, we could choose the home based on the home and not the location. So the top states that we were looking at were Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and Delaware. Another reason why we wanted to kind of move out of the Northeast is because the property taxes are so incredibly high. I think New Jersey has like the highest property taxes out of any state. I think maybe New Jersey and Connecticut kind of vie for that top spot every year. And it's really, really cold. Like warmer weather is always a plus in my book. Anyway, one day I decided to change my age parameters from seven, I think I had it set from like 1700 to like 1920 and I changed it to like modern day because there were a lot of homes constructed in the 90s that like kind of modeled historical homes a lot of brick a lot of symmetry which is like what I was after so I do that and I think like the first or second house I click on was this house and I immediately fell in love I immediately knew uh, it was the one so I looked to see how long it was on the market mind you this is at the absolute height of the housing market I remember on our street like homes that were listed for sale would literally have lines down the block and people like fighting for their spot in line and homes just flying off the shelf same day. So I thought that since the house is on the market for about seven days already, it, there would already be multiple offers that it would already be under contract. So I immediately called the realtor and thankfully there were no offers yet, but there was like a lot of interest from out of state people, kind of like us, like asking about um, like internet and other statistics. And I asked like, could we schedule a FaceTime tour for the next day, which was Friday. And she accommodated, she was so kind. So when we did the FaceTime tour, it kind of just reconfirmed everything we already had already thought. Absolutely loved it. Just so incredibly beautiful. So mind you, my husband was like, this is crazy. This is way too quick what are you thinking? You're being impulsive, blah, blah, blah. So I crunched the numbers and we would be able to make it work as long as we just did everything in a timely manner. So then he was on board, thankfully, um, obviously. So after the tour, we wrote up an offer and then we submitted it. And then Monday morning, we get word back that our offer was accepted, which was just so exciting. Um, I remember I was talking to my dad and he was like, yeah, offer 40K under, ask for this and this. And I was like, dad, that's just not how it works anymore. Um, and I think we actually ended up going 10K over asking. So that advice was just totally null and void boomer advice. So my speed definitely paid off because when I came down for the inspection like a few days later, the realtor had told me that there were seven backup offers, which is just wild. I'm so glad that we just acted quickly because I knew, I just knew it was the right house for us. And we are right next to Williamsburg. Um, I honestly never thought we'd be able to afford this area because Williamsburg is actually really expensive. Most of the homes are seven hundred thousand, six hundred thousand dollars. 
thankfully we were able to get this home within our budget on land because it's about 20 minutes outside of Williamsburg, um, which is great because that's initially what we wanted anyway. But I'm really glad that we chose Virginia because A, there is just so much history here. The reason we wanted to stay on the East Coast initially was for the historic homes and just the history surrounding it. I feel like Virginia is even more historical than New England because it was like the first colony and we're surrounded by Williamsburg, Jamestown, Yorktown. Even our little area has a lot of rural history. Um, I think we actually live on land that was gifted to Pocahontas. Um, so that's cool. There's just so much history and I absolutely love that. Um, I remember our neighbor who came and introduced himself was telling us that his kids found like a cannonball that ended up being like a cannonball from the Revolutionary War, like across the street from our home. So just so incredibly cool. And what's also awesome is that we've actually been coming to Colonial Williamsburg for the last few summers. I also came here as a kid. So the fact that we were already familiar with the area just made the whole move that much easier. So I am going to stop talking now. Uh, let's move on to the house tour. So this is the front of the house. She is all brick and they used um, a technique called Flemish bond brickwork in order to construct the home, which means that the bricks are laid in like an alternating pattern, um, which is really cool. And it, like I said, models the George Wythe house perfectly. But we love the like the little brick like walkway. The dogs just love sitting outside and sunbathing. And if you look behind, there's like this cool little like winding path to like the street. So the house is on three acres and it is basically a big square and the home is kind of like in the middle of the three acres. So what we were thinking of doing is like actually clearing out like a lot of these trees that are in the front of the house and also in the back so maybe clearing like two full acres and I wanted to replace the majority of the trees in the front of the house with fruit trees so it would just basically be like our little orchard um, and we'd replace the majority of the trees just you know for drainage purposes and ecological purposes we'll still have the trees here they'll just be different trees um, and then I was thinking that on the side of the house like the side back that's where my garden would be. And I would want to, it to model the garden at Colonial Williamsburg, which is my absolute favorite garden I've ever seen in my life. It just has the best energy. It's just the most beautiful garden I've ever seen. And it's like a working garden. It's not an actual ornamental garden. It's a, you know, an actual vegetable garden. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be getting to do that this year or next year, probably next year, because that shit is a lot of work. I built our garden at our old home, our old home. So we had a tiny suburban lot. And on that lot, we had 13 fruit trees. Uh, I think we had like six in the front and seven in the back. I, we had uh, two peaches, three cherries, and one persimmon in the front. And then we had two apples, one peach, uh, two figs, and one persimmon in the back, along with raspberry and blackberry bushes that lined our back fence, and asparagus, and a strawberry patch. So we had a lot of stuff going on in our tiny, I think it was um, 6,000 square foot lot, and now we have three acres. So I just, oh my God, I'm just like, I can't wait. There are just so many possibilities with this home. I'm so incredibly excited. Okay, so let's look at the backyard. One thing we do really have to worry about here is the level of ticks. My family, like Lyme disease really fucks us up. Um, and since we've been here, I've found ticks on me and my husband has found ticks on him. So it's really scary. Thank God they were dog ticks and not deer ticks. Okay, so this is the back of the house. It looks very similar to the front. You can see like a piece of paper in a cup <laughs> for all the bugs I put outside. Okay, so let's go inside. Okay, so this is the foyer. Uh, we have a lot of like random furniture in here that we got from estate sales that we still have to bring upstairs. It's just like really heavy. So it's kind of just staying in here for the moment. So this house is about 3,800 square feet, which is massive, <laughs> much larger than our old house. And our old, ho our old house, I think was like 1,400 square feet. And out of like all the rooms, we only had like three rooms actually furnished. So that was like our bedroom, the living room, and my sewing room. We gave away our bedroom set, and the only thing we brought down was our living room set, which is now like my husband's office stuff. So we really did come into like a fully empty house, which I was so excited to furnish with like a bunch of estate sale antique furniture. As soon as we got here, basically, as after we like settled in, I started looking online and we found a couple great estate sales where the entire home was furnished in like this colonial reproduction furniture. There was just one house in Williamsburg, just the most beautiful home. Oh my God. And we, I, I think I went in and I got 90% of the furniture that was in there like I went four hours early I wanted to make sure I was like number one and I went in I got like the two bedroom sets the living room furniture the den furniture and um, that 
furnish like a good 50% of the house. So and all of the furniture pieces were literally cheaper than like what you could buy at Ikea. Like antique or antique reproduction furniture is actually insanely expensive. Like a buffet like this, which I got for, I think um, around $200 would be, I, th I looked it up online. I looked up this exact brand online. It's selling for like $1,200, crazy. This secretary would go for like $4,000. I got it for $100 um, because this furniture is real mahogany. It has like that dovetail construction. So they definitely do not make furniture like this anymore. So I'm really, really happy to have that level of quality and craftsmanship in my own furniture in my home. So that is just, Amazing in my opinion. This foyer kind of goes straight through the house. This is the back door. And if you look down, you'll see these absolutely beautiful floors. Um, this was what first drew me to the house. Like I, I first noticed these wide plank, heart of pine. I think it's that, that's how you say it, heart of pine or heart pine um, flooring. It's just so beautiful. I remember like I was speaking with the um, home insurance agent and that is the first thing he noticed as well. And I, when I later had a problem, I called back and he was like, oh yeah, you're the house with like the really nice floors. Uh, we were actually speaking with the seller and he mentioned that these floors were actually taken from a home that was built in the 1700s in Richmond and repurposed in this house. So these floors are actually historic, which is so cool. Oh my God, I love that level of history. When I found that out, I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. Okay, so let's go into the living room. Okay, so this is the living room. That is one of the three wood burning fireplaces in this house, which is another thing that really, really sold me on this property because I love fireplaces. I think they just look so nice. But yeah, this is like the room where we're kind of just storing all of our furniture for now. Um, we don't actually use it as a living room um, at the moment, but when we do and we finally design it, I would love to make this more so of like a masculine feeling room, maybe like a darker pink color. Um, I want the couches to both be going vertically. So that way when you come in, like you feel kind of like welcome from both sides. Um, I could see some bookshelves maybe on this wall, maybe even some built-ins. That's kind of what I'm like envisioning for this room. Another thing that I forgot to mention when we first moved in is that the house was just completely and utterly filthy. I, when I came down for the inspection, I hadn't realized just how um, kind of bad it was. There was literally like food splatters all over the walls in the weirdest rooms, like in like the upstairs closets. There was like this, these like orange dots all over the ceilings in the living room, the hallway and the dining room. I think the inspector said that they were like a mildew, um, but he wasn't sure. I was thinking maybe it could be like nicotine residue or something like that. It was really difficult to get off. It took me anywhere from two days per room to two weeks per room. I think like the spare rooms only took about like a day or two while the kitchen took me a full two weeks to clean just because of like all the cabinets just had like this black sticky stuff on the bottom. I have no idea what it was, but I don't really blame the seller. He was an older gentleman who I think he had lost his wife sadly um, a few years prior and he was just unable to really maintain the home. Also, as one gets older, you know, you lose your eyesight, you lose some of your mobility so there's no judgment towards him. It's just something that we had to deal with. Let's move on to the dining room. So this is the dining room. We actually purchased this uh, dining room set from the seller. We thought, oh yeah, it's, it looks like it's in great condition. Just based on the corner cabinets and the grandfather clock. When we took the table covering off, like we noticed that the table was just completely scratched, um, which kind of sucks. I feel like we were like a little bit ripped off, but that's okay because it was actually really nice having one room furnished when we got here. That, that way we could put like our important like documents away. And we kind of just use this room as like our base for a little bit. So honestly, it's like not that big of a deal. Eventually I would love to get like a new dining room set from an estate sale. This table only has six chairs. I would love a big table with like 12 chairs or something like that. But one thing I am really happy that we did purchase from the seller is this grandfather clock. My parents had a grandfather clock as well as my grandparents. So it's definitely like a little bit of nostalgia that now I can have my own grandfather clock. So I think that's pretty cool so i absolutely also love all of the molding in the house that crown molding is just so beautiful and intricate like look how beautiful this is i absolutely love it this is another piece that just I absolutely loved about the house when I initially saw it. And I love the color of it too. It's definitely a historical color and I'm glad they did beige because it kind of matches with everything. And, and I like that it's like warmer because it kind of ties in with the warmth of the hardwood floors. So yeah, love that, love that. 
So this is our massive kitchen. This kitchen is so much bigger than our old kitchen, obviously. I absolutely love the layout in here, and there's such great natural light that comes in here. I love when there is a window over the sink. Let me put that up. I feel like it just has such great energy, even though it's very dated. It's like very 80s, trying to be historical, um, which I honestly don't mind. I, I, I really don't. My husband actually, absolutely hates this room. This is probably gonna be the first room that we renovate. And there's this massive window right here. We, so we don't have like a kitchen table yet, but I have been keeping my eye out for some. There is this cute little countertop here. I definitely see myself doing canning and like um, canning prep here. So what we are envisioning for renovating this space is to instead of having laminate or like a quartz or something like that, I would definitely wanna do like butcher block countertops, not only because they are historical, but because we have two big black dogs and their hair has the unique ability of being able to stick to white porcelain-like surfaces. Um, and we had quartz countertops in our old house. Like that was something we installed when we were renovating and it was so difficult to keep them clean. Even though I vacuumed every single day, their hair just, like I said, has the unique ability of just finding its way in the weirdest places. So I would definitely do like a butcher block countertop. I think we would reface the cabinets. Um, the cabinet doors aren't in the best condition but I think they have good bones overall, like built with quality for sure. Cabinets are probably the most expensive part of a kitchen and we have so many of them. So I think we would just maybe reface them. I'm thinking maybe we would paint the cabinets or maybe we would do like a sage green, which I know is like super trendy right now, but it's a color that I genuinely enjoy. And this house does have an electric stove. I definitely have to admit that this heats up water so quickly compared to my gas stove that I was used to, but I really miss my gas stove. So, and I know they're not as energy efficient, but I would love to have this just as all workspace and, and then possibly put like maybe a range over here. And instead of having this oven, we would just have that as extra counter space possibly. And then I would love to have like a refrigerator that's like paneled, you know, that has like, you can't tell it's actually a refrigerator. Like it has like the same cover as the cabinets. That way the appliances kind of never look old. So that is kind of like what I'm envisioning for this space. Um, for the meantime, I really like the kitchen. So this is the hallway that is off the foyer and it leads to a downstairs bathroom, which is actually pretty big. And then this is my husband's office slash gaming room. This is where the majority of our old living room furniture is. This is the room that we kind of hang out in the most. It's actually really cute and cozy and I really like it. So we only have like one TV. So whenever we want to watch something, we just come in here. Um, I think it's supposed to be a bedroom, although it doesn't actually have a closet, but um, yeah. Okay, so let's go upstairs. Okay, so this is the upstairs little hallway um, area. This is like like a little vestibule. We have so much storage space. We have like multiple closets in each room and a massive attic, which literally could be three rooms within itself. So this is the little, um, I guess, what would you call it? Like balcony or just upstairs hallway? I could definitely see like a little writing desk maybe on this wall or like um, one of those under window tables with like a vase of flowers on it or maybe another table here with like flowers on it. I just think that would look super nice um, and definitely art, a lot of art. So this is the linen closet and then there are two rooms um, on this side of the house. So there are three bathrooms in the house. So this is like the hallway bathroom. This is like the first of the spare rooms. This room is honestly massive. It has two closets. This one is like one of those like Harry Potter closets. Dude, our firstborn is going to love having this room. This room really could be like two large bedrooms. Um, got this from an estate sale. So we just still have to like kind of put everything together. And I honestly cannot wait to decorate this room. Okay, let's go on to the other room is the other spare room so like i said when we first moved in i went room by room cleaning everything i didn't get to the upstairs bedrooms until maybe about halfway through so about a month in so i come in here and i open the closet and it is completely filled with mold which is just awful and disgusting. And I feel like the seller definitely knew that there was a leak in the roof. But like I said, he's older, he's in his late eighties. 
It's like, you know, what can you do, honestly? We did go up into the attic one day when it was raining and we did see water coming in right above this area. So we have to call like a roofer in order to get that patch, which is probably not going to be cheap at all. I used so much disinfectant, um, sprayed down everything, waited 10 minutes, scrubbed it clean with soap. We also have a, now a dehumidifier in this room. So I'm really hoping that the mold does not come back. So that was definitely uh, an unforeseen issue that really sucked. So we got this furniture at the estate sale I was talking about. I love this little like design. Um, and like I said, it has a dovetail construction, which I absolutely love. Let's move on to the main bedroom which is on this side of the house. So there's two rooms and the bathroom as well, but this is what our bedroom looks like. We got this bedroom set from the estate sale. I think we paid like $180 for the bed, $46 for each nightstand. We got this chest for, I think it was like maybe $400. We got two of these chests. Um, I think each of them was maybe like $200. We got this couch. And that secretary, I got, I think I got that secretary from a different place. Yeah, so our bedroom is so big. Um, that's why we kind of like put a couch there to like kind of have two separate spaces. I also think it's just so amazing to have an actual fireplace in our bedroom. That's just been like a lifelong desire of mine. I just think it's so cool, so awesome, so cozy. And the fact that we have three of them is just like, whoa, it's like such a dream come true. I love how dark it is in here. This house is north facing. So the backyard is south facing, um, which is amazing for gardening. And I was just so happy to hear that because that stuff like really does matter, which means that all of the front facing rooms are darker. Our bedroom, like the living room, one of the guest bedrooms, which is amazing when you want to sleep in. So I love that. Okay, so this is the room right next to our room. I call it the dressing room. I don't know, some people might call it like a sitting room, but it's where like the closet is located. So I have like all my clothes in here. Um, and this is kind of like where I get ready for the day. This room has like really great sunlight. And then behind is, this is our bathroom. It's definitely quite dated. The grout around the sink is missing. So it's probably going to be the second room that we remodel. But other than that, it's like in perfectly good condition. So there is another room to my left. It's technically the family room, but since we don't have kids, I'm going to be making it into my sewing room because What's the point of having two living rooms? So I did finish that, that room is finished. I actually did paint it, but I don't wanna show it quite yet because I wanted to do a dedicated sewing room video. So look out for that. But other than that, that is our new house. We are so incredibly grateful that we even had this opportunity to purchase this home. We literally could not be happier. We love the area. It is surrounded by such natural beauty and so many like state parks. Uh, the James River. It's just, it's so amazing. I wake up every single day and just thank my lucky stars that I'm even in this position. So yeah, just wanted to say that. But other than that, I hope you have a lovely week. Bye.